Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Echolalia by Brioni Doyle. Now, this is one of the books on the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. What I found interesting about this book is it has a real gothic feel. Even though it's set in a small town in country Australia, there's this sinister kind of gothic element going on in one of the storylines. So we have a past and present storyline in this book. And in the past storyline, it feels like a ghost story. That's what it feels like. There's this sinister darkness to it. And I just found that theme, that element, set against this summer story that's going on in a heat wave. So everything's hot and dry, but having this dark gothic feel to it as well, looking around the edges, that makes this book quite special. So if that interests you, stick around as I discuss this book in more detail. As I mentioned before, the book is split into past and present, and it's split in chapters, so it keeps flipping between the two. I prefer if it was linear, the storyline was linear. I don't really like flipping between past and present all the time. I get tired of that. I just see it so often in books. I just find it a bit tiring. I just want a linear storyline. I think it makes the story flow a bit better, and I think it's better for the readers. I think it engages you more. I think when you go from past to present all the time, I think you lose a bit of that engagement in the book. Well, for me, I do anyway. What I really like about this book is it really has a gothic feel to it. So even though it comes across as a drama um, and a slight little mystery element, you know, there's something that's happened in the future. So we're in the past we get hints that in the future something's happened, just small snippets in chapters. And that's a bit of a mystery because you want to know what that is. You Almost like you want to solve it. But the whole overall feel of the story, and it's very subtle, and that's what I like about it as well. It's got this gothic feel, and it almost comes across like a very dark gothic, not a horror, it's almost going into horror territory, kind of gothic, sinister feel that's, just hovering in the edges, in the background, a lot in this story. And I really like that, and I found that quite gripping, and that really drew me into the story more. I felt that more in the past storyline, that gothic feel. In the present storyline, I didn't really feel it that much. It wasn't as obvious, but in the past, it was there all the time, and I found that really well done. What we have is Emma. So Emma's our main focus. She falls into like a fairy tale marriage. She marries this guy who comes from a wealthy family in the local area. They're property developers. Um, so, you know, she's not going to worry for money and he loves her, seems to love her quite a lot. They build this big house. They have three kids, you know, high profile family in the area, well respected. It's all fairy tale for her. What we have though is one of the children, middle child has learning difficulties and that creates tension in the family and she hovers over that child a lot and all her focus is on that child and she seems to lose focus for anybody else in the family. Her mother-in-law is always in the picture, very domineering and always putting her down, sometimes very overtly, sometimes just like whispers in the background, but she's always there. and. It's like a monster character, like you know, this this monster lurking in the background all the time, destroying Emma's self-confidence and self-worth, making her feel so bad about herself. And that spirals her into almost this depression that she goes into, and it just gets deeper and deeper into this hole. And this is the whole gothic feel. She's like, this great life she's got it should be bright for her, and everything should be easy and comfortable and she's got so much to look forward to but she gets dragged into this almost black hole that she can't get out of and that's where this gothic feel comes into it it's like a comes like a prisoner in her own life in her own home and her family you know her husband's family as well where they should be looking out for her and protecting her they're not it feels like they're the cause of all her woes. It feels like also they're her jailers at times. And she doesn't seem to have really anywhere to turn to. And you can see the slow disintegration of her as 
the story goes on. She starts becoming forgetful. Um, everything is too much for her. She starts withdrawing from everybody. And you just see her world getting bleaker and bleaker and darker and darker. And it's so strong, the feeling of that. And I love the way the author showed it to us. So it wasn't forced down our throats what was happening. It was shown. Some things are hinted. Some things are very subtle. And I found that was such a good way to craft the story. And it dragged me as a reader into it more and more. The whole storyline is told in the background of a small town in the country. And we have events going on, big events, that people can't control, but they do play an impact into some of the ways people act, some of their motives, and just some of the interactions as well. So we have climate change as a big theme. So where they are in the country, it's very dry, there's a drought. There was a lake in the town that's dried up. You know, there's not much rain at all. Um, so that affects people. It's like heat waves after heat wave every summer. So that affects the way people think and the way they act. And I think that plays a big part in this story as well. We also have the theme of the small towns that struggle to survive. They're wanting to build more houses, get more people in. But there's nothing to keep people there. There's no local jobs. There's no local infrastructure. You know, people live there, have to travel for work. And travel to seems to do anything really. And you get that concept in here as well, that it might be a town slowly getting down to its last legs, you know, falling down to its knees. And there are people there who are trying to struggle to hold on, make it survive, especially Emma's in-laws. You know, they're property developers and they want to build houses and estates in the area. But are there people there who can buy all those houses and what's going to attract them to come to the town? So you get all that in this story as well. I think that plays an important backdrop in what goes on with all the characters. The conclusion of the story, I think, is left a bit open. It didn't really have a good conclusion, in my opinion, and I'm not sure if that's intentional. I'm not sure if the author just couldn't develop a good conclusion to bring everything together. It just seemed to hang there, and so I'm not really sure what the purpose of that was. I just didn't like the ending as much as some of the other parts of the book. Emma is our main character. She's a really good character. It's so haunting to see the changes in her in the past storyline. I thought the author did a great job of this character in those parts of this book. In the present storyline, not so much. She wasn't as engaging for me in the present storyline. But in that past storyline, a really good character and just so haunting and so well written. I have just was so engaged with what was going on with Emma and had so much empathy for her and really cared about what happened to her in the past storyline. Pat is Emma's mother-in-law and she's a good villain in the past storyline. I think of her as a villain. She seems to be always on the edges and the one that's, you know, always tormenting Emma in a way. And you can just picture her so easily when you're reading. You can picture all her eye rolls. You can picture her in the background whispering and talking behind Emma's back. You can picture what she looks like. You can just picture everything about her. And as the story goes on, you really get to understand her motivations, what drives her behavior. And her motivations all aren't always good. They're not always pure. Some of them are there for her own personal gain. Well, a lot are, I should say. And the author's created this really complex character in Pat. Sometimes you got the impression that she was trying to help. But that starts to change a little bit as the story goes on. And you get to see the true Pat. And I thought it was really clever what the author did. Giving us a character that has the potential for good and evil. And just to see which way that character goes. I want to mention Clem. And Clem is Emma's oldest daughter, oldest child. Clem has the most character growth out of anybody, I think, in this story. In the past storyline, she's a very young girl. In the present storyline, she's a young adult, you know, a late teen. So quite a big span of age as well for the character. But her character growth from when she's a child, very innocent, to when she's like as a teenager in the present storyline, you get to see what motivates that change in the character why she acts like she does, and different revelations come up in her 
present day storyline as well. And they grow the character more and change her a bit more in that present storyline. So I think out of all the characters, Clem stands out the most for character growth. And I think the author did a really good job in creating this character and crafting it. Very believable, I think this character is. You can just understand everything she does. It all makes sense. I liked this book a lot. I wanted to like it more, but there were just certain things, especially in the present day storyline, that just were a bit little negative for me. I rate it a 3.5 out of 5. It was quite a good book and one of the better books I've read from the Miles Franklin Literary Award Longlist so far. I think just the way the author created this story, you know, in a small town, giving us that gothic feel, even though it's not set in a period where you'd think, you know, you get a gothic feel, that was really special. I haven't really seen that before in a novel and I think the author did a wonderful job in doing that. I just wish that the present day storyline was as good as the past storyline in this book and I think it would have rated higher if that had been the case. I am reviewing each book that's on the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. Check out my channel and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those videos. Also check out the playlist for the Miles Franklin Literary Award long list. It should be on your screen now.